All right, so I want you to pay attention to this charger right here, right? Black on black. This is the video taken by the rightful owner in New Jersey of this charger. You can see the New Jersey plates. Black on black scat pack. Look at the Hellcat replica rims. Got the side marker, super clean. I don't know what kind of emblem that is, but it looks clean. Go to the front of it. That is a scat pack. Look at the badge, right? That video was taken by the owner in New Jersey before it was stolen. Do you know what this charger looks like now that it has been stolen and it's been recovered by police? Yeah, a shell, a shell. Let's look at it from the front, a shell. The only way that the police could tell this was his charger or charger period was by looking at the VIN number on the front windshield. Aside from that, they couldn't tell what it was, let alone whose it was. Another day in the life of a Mopar owner. This is the type of stuff that we got to deal with. From New Jersey to Maryland, it was a car in New Jersey. It's a shell in Maryland. Let's talk about it. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Knockout360, man, with another video. So as you can tell, I'm in a house. That makes this a house vlog. You already know what's going down when I come around. Let's get into it. I've got car content, car shows, car reviews, car meets. Anything and everything car related happens on this channel. So if you're into that, make sure that you stick around because you're in the right place for everyone else. Hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that you know what's coming out and when it's coming out. So boom. Um, let's just look at the video. <clears throat> let's look at the video of what this charger at one point was, right? Before it was stolen and stripped. Black on black, super clean charger. You know what I'm saying? Wicker bill in the back, rear splitter, Hellcat replica rims, side markers, side skirts. I don't know what kind of emblem that is. That looks like the new uh, 2025 electric charger emblem. I know it's not, but either way, this is a scat pack. He's got the red uh, front, you know, lip things. Uh, it is a scat pack. Look at the emblem. Solid. You can tell it's a scat by the hood too. Clean, super clean scat. Black on black, black tent, the whole nine. Clean. This video was taken by the owner in New Jersey which is where the owner bought this car, which is where the owner had this car, the whole nine. Unfortunately, and I'll show you another picture of it too. Yeah, so that's it right there. That looks like they was at a car wash. I hope it wasn't a drive-through car wash where he put the, had the, the big bristles and everything uh, scraping on it. I hope that's not the case, although it looks like it is. But this is what it looks like before the, the theft took place. Super clean. What does it look like now? Well, I'll show you. A shell. He told me that, and shout out to my man. Uh, his Instagram is, let's see here. I'll put the link in the description so you can go check him out and show him some love. G Bucks One. I'll put that link and everything in the description so you guys can know where to find him. But look at what a scat pack charger looks like when you take every damn thing out of the car. And I mean everything from the seats to the carpet to the windows to the doors to every piece of electronic equipment possible, they stripped this car down to the shell. Like you can see the unpainted parts of this car. You know, that's the front side of it. Let's, uh, let's look at the front of it. And this is the interesting part about it. The only way that they could tell that this was uh, his particular scat. So to give you some backstory, he bought the car in New Jersey. All of the videos and pictures that I just showed you were taken in New Jersey. He bought it in New Jersey. It was stolen from New Jersey. Unfortunately, he didn't have it in the garage, did not have any security on it. So he was basically outside naked every night. They stole it, took it to Maryland, the DMV area, stripped it and ditched it. And according to Maryland police, they found uh, Baltimore, Maryland, I'm assuming, they found this scat pack uh, in the cut and the only way that they could tell that it was his car was by looking at the front uh, VIN number in the front windshield. You can't even tell that this is a charger, let alone, um, you know, anybody's particular car. I see an orange soda in the back that may be a, a giveaway. So maybe if he had an orange soda in the back seat, he could look at it and be like, oh, yeah, that's definitely my charger. There's an orange soda back there. There's a crush, orange crush back there. Aside from everything else, it looks like they left one door. Uh, they left one door on the uh, passenger side in the rear. Um, but they took every damn thing else. And I do mean everything, every damn thing else. Let's look at another picture here. This is um, from the back of it completely. Yeah. Like stripped. 
completely stripped. Um, the only way that you can tell this is a charger is by, you know, the, the quarter panel. Aside from that, you wouldn't know what the hell this was or what it is. I mean, they took the, the, the trunk liner. They took the damn trunk liner. They took the lights for the trunk in the backs in the trunk. They're like, they took the lights out. They took everything. And like I said, I asked him, I said, like, are these your, these your pictures? Is this your car for real? He said, yeah. I mean, they even took the sunroof. Like when you look at it and I'm looking at the other picture, they took his sunroof. Like if you look at this picture up close, like it's a hole right there. They took the sunroof, like, you know, like for one, this was done by a professional. And when I say professional, I'm talking about somebody that knows these cars really well. But I mean, like this is what we have to go through, you know, um, I am getting back on my uh, my crusade to protect our cars. I took a little break and I'm sure some of you guys noticed it. Because some of you mentioned it in the in the uh, comments that I wasn't mentioning car lock as much. Well, I'm back on that heavy car lock, car lock, car lock. Um, one of my homeboys just bought um, a charger, um, and he asked me, you know, what about my security and all that stuff. And when I told him, he was like, you know, that all sounds good, but I don't really want to drop twelve hundred, thirteen hundred, or however much you dropped on your security. He was like, I just need something to let me know. When my car is, uh, let me turn my TV down. When my car is, you know, being attacked or, or being broken into or something like that so that I can come out and handle it because his car is always in front of his house. And that's when I recommended car lock. You know what I'm saying? $50, one, one time fee, 50 bucks. You use my code, get a discount on that, right? And then you get a discount on the monthly fee too. And you got the peace of mind of one, knowing where your car always is because it is a 24-7 GPS and you can see it directly from your phone, right? Like I'm looking at my car right now. I would show it, but it's got my address and I've got it in my Jeep Grand Cherokee, both of them, um, 24 seven GPS vibration detection, engine start, uh, car move 24 seven GPS, all that stuff. And it gives you a log of everywhere that you've been like at any point that you've ever been anywhere. It gives you an all day log. So that you can check it out. And if you've done some harsh acceleration, harsh driving, it'll tell you that too. Car lock. And that was what I recommended it to him. Re recommended to him because, you know, he didn't want to go out and drop a stack on it. And I get it. A lot of people don't. A lot of people would rather put that thousand towards, you know, I mean, let's be honest here. We're Mopar guys. We want to put that money towards tires, rims, graphics, um, tent, stuff like that. Me personally, I don't understand that. I don't, you know, I think that's uh, your priorities are out of order because when I got my Hellcat, I took delivery of my Hellcat on a Saturday. By Wednesday of that next week, I had an appointment for uh, security, for security install. You know what I'm saying? And I already had Carlock waiting on me. Like, I let Carlock know, hey, listen, my cat's going to be in in the next two weeks. Go ahead and send out a new device. So, I mean, before we could do anything, I had my, you know, Carlock in there, and then I had a brand new security system the next week. But I understand that's not everybody's priority, and I get that. I'm not being, you know, dismissive or facetious about that. I get it. But, um... You got to have something in these cars, man. I mean, if you don't want to go out and drop a stack, which I completely understand, get something. Car lock is a, is a straightforward, affordable way to go when it comes to car security. I mean, obviously, it's not going to stop anybody from breaking in. It's not going to stop anybody from, you know, starting the engine or anything like that. It's not a kill switch, but it will let you know that something's going on when something's going on, as opposed to not knowing anything at all. Because if you've got a Charger or Challenger that's prior to 2022, it doesn't have that enhanced security. So somebody could break in and literally just jump in the inside of your car and nothing's going to happen. Whereas now with the enhanced security, if they break your window and try to jump in, it should set off the uh, motion detection alarm, which is what's going to set the car off. But if you've got a 21 or a 20 or anything prior to, you're pretty much screwed. You know what I'm saying? You're dead in the water, unfortunately. So you need something which is where car lock comes into play, you know, um, simple, straightforward, affordable solution. And I wish my man here had that before his shit got taken. Now he had a lot of things kind of working against him. I'll be real with you. Um, the fact that he didn't have his car in the garage and the fact that he had no security on it whatsoever, he was, you know, I hate to say this, but he was kind of asking for trouble. And I mean, you guys say this shit all the time. 
the number one thing, whenever I do videos like this, the first thing you guys say is garage. A garage will take 90 to 95% of your worry away when it comes to a car, and that's very true. When you got your car in the garage, a thief has to do a lot more to get your car. And nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, it's just not worth it. Because at that point, he's either got to become some sort of master uh, thief where he's got to break into the house somehow, break into the garage, you know, open the garage somehow or another in order to get the car out, break into the house from the inside and get to the garage. Like it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot of risk involved. And a lot of criminals are just not willing to go there. And I don't blame them. I understand that. They want the quick hit, the quick lick. You know what I'm saying? They want to pull up to your house and see your scat pack just sitting outside, you know, uh, with no, you know, uh, unattended to, you know, and that's what happened. Unfortunately, in my man's case right here, he said he was in New Jersey, uh, had his car parked outside, not in the garage, no security. And they yanked the shit, you know, and took it from New Jersey to Maryland stripped it and all of that shit is probably being sold right now by one of those dodge pages that's always tagging me on instagram wanting me to repost that they've got four hellcat doors and four hellcat uh uh fucking steering wheels that they want to sell and they want me to repost it that shit annoys me man because it's like i know what you guys are doing like a lot of those parts if not all of those parts are stolen like who the hell buys a hellcat charger or challenger and the first thing they do is rip the steering wheel off and try to sell it like some people do change out their steering wheels and stuff like that and they'll put the uh the carbon fiber joints i get that but that's not a large majority like 90 percent of mopar owners are happy with their steering wheel and they're just going to leave it as as is but even that like people these these pages will tag me when they're selling like authentic hellcat doors and authentic hellcat bumpers and authentic hellcat uh headlights and it's like i know what you're doing like these cars get stolen you strip them and then you try to sell them on Instagram and you just go around tagging the biggest Mopar Instagram pages and hope that I'll repost it. And it's like, you're not, you're not getting the police looking at my page. Like I'm sure CMPD is already watching all of my videos and watching my Instagram and all that shit. Like I'm not reposting stolen uh, property and all that shit. Like I'm not doing that. But that's what happens with cars like this. When they get stripped like this, I guarantee you every single one of these parts is for sale somewhere. Somewhere, somehow somebody is selling a Hellcat trunk lid a trunk hood, you know, somebody is selling a Hellcat or well, hood period because this doesn't even have that. Someone is selling three uh, scat pack doors, you know, somewhere, somehow on somebody's Instagram page, they have three scat pack charger doors for sale. And um, obviously those scat pack doors don't have VIN numbers on them. So it's not like the police can look at them and, oh, this is, you know, such and such car that got stolen. Like, you know, once it gets taken off your car, it's gone forever, you know. But in a situation like this, guys, to this man's point, man, and I hate that I have to say this and I hate that this happened to him. He had a lot of things working against him. It wasn't in the garage. There was no security on it. So it's basically sitting outside like a almost like a steal me, you know, had a big steal me sign on it. And I hate that we live in this day and age where these cars get stolen like that. But just because of the climate that we live in, you guys got to know better. We got to know better. You know what I'm saying? Um you, you got to know better, man. You have to know better when it comes to these cars. Like uh, even today, I went to uh, uh, Charlotte Premium Outlets. For you guys that's in Charlotte, you know what I'm talking about. That's just the outlet mall where they got all that the stores and shit outside. I didn't drop my Hellcat, even though it was in the broad daylight. Yeah, even though it was broad daylight, you know, I still didn't drop my Hellcat because it's like I'm not about to have my car sitting outside for an hour, two and a half, three hours while I'm, you know, shopping, like anything could happen. Now, granted, you guys know I'm security from head to toe when it comes to that car, but you can still try to break the window and steal, you know, steal my fucking peppermints out of my center console. You know what I'm saying? Or try to break in and steal whatever I got in my glove compartment, which is nothing because I carry my pistol on me at all times because I have a concealed carry permit. But I just don't want to take that risk. Like there are only certain places where I can take that car and feel comfortable taking it and uh, taking it to the mall or the outlets is not one of them. And certainly not let my car sit outside with no security, with no garage, no nothing all night, every night, like nine times out of 10, the people that stole this car probably came in his neighborhood on like a Monday and saw that the scat sitting out there probably came back on like a Wednesday, saw the scat in the same place and then came back Saturday and was like, Nine times out of 10, that car has not moved. Like that's where they park it. So we can go ahead and yank that shit right now. 
These people are doing a lot more reconnaissance on you all than you think. People are watching you. When you pull in that neighborhood with that loud ass 6'4 or 6'2 or 5'7, people see you. They're watching. Trust me when I say they're watching. I can't tell you how many times people would DM me and say, oh, man, I saw you pulling into the gym or I saw you pulling into, I saw you in the Chick-fil-A line, man, you know? And it's like, damn, like, you watching my shit? Like, right now, I don't have any graphics on my car. My shit is just straight black, so it's not like I stand out, but people are watching, man. So be careful out there, guys. I can only say be careful if you got your car outside. There's nothing wrong with living in an apartment or living in a home where you don't have a garage or maybe your garage is full. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to, you know, eat your lunch when it comes to that. But if you are outside, as far as your car being parked out there, you got to have something. If not car lock, something. CompuStar, you can go the full security route that I went, you know, kill switch, alarm, window break detection, all that shit. Or you can keep it simple and go with car lock, right? 49 bucks, well, 19 bucks, and then you're good to go. The link is in the description. Check them out. But you got to have something on these cars. You cannot be out here naked because you're literally asking for it. It's not the if, it's the when, unfortunately, because um, it's going to happen to all of us. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody's been looking in my window, you know, trying to see what I got sitting in my car. But um, I hate this happened to my man right here. Uh, he said he's going to get a red eye. So, you know, God works in mysterious ways. He went from a scat pack charger. Now he's going to go get a red eye charger. And that's how you're supposed to upgrade. Hopefully when he gets the red eye, he'll get some security or at least have that damn thing parked in the garage. You know what I'm saying? One of the two or both of them. But either way, you know, you live and you learn. He made a mistake. He paid for it. But uh, hopefully he'll come out better on the other end. You know, but for all you guys out there, watch this video. Learn from it. Don't let it be you. If you got your scat or your cat or your RT, your track hawk or your Ram T-Rex, sitting outside right now, Durango Hellcat sitting outside right now in your apartment complex or your townhome development and you ain't got nothing on it, you're bugging. You are tripping. You know what I'm saying? You're asking for it. Stop playing. It's not the if, it's the when. It's going, somebody's going to try you. Whether they try you in your neighborhood or whether they try you at work or when you're out and about, somebody's going to try you. So get something to protect you and your investment, man. As always, it's been your boy Knockout360. I'll see you in the next one.